Hey guys, we have another budget battery here for review today. I'm hoping this is a good one since the last two really haven't been. This one is from Dong Hot, and that's Dong with a zero, not with an O, Dong Hot. Uh, this battery was selling for $99 on Amazon. I found the deal through the Battery Finder website. If you haven't seen the Battery Finder tool yet, you'll definitely want to check that out. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's very standard as usual. This is a group 24 plastic case with two collapsible carry handles, and we also have M8 epoxied in terminal bolts. Let's take a quick look at the manual. We'll run a capacity test, and then we'll tear it apart and see what we got. One thing I did notice is that this battery doesn't say Dong Hot on it anywhere. There are no brand names on it. So, you know, I think this is a new brand they're starting up. Let's take a look at the manual here and see what we can find. Um, I did notice that this does have some familiar brands in it. I mean, we've all seen this brand name around Amazon. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Dongjin Power and Dong Hot are part of the Dongjin group. This brochure seems to be more of a marketing pamphlet, but it does have some specifications in here. Uh, I assume this is the mini model since it's a group 24 case. It's rated for a 20 amps standard charge and 20 amps standard discharge. Max discharge of 100 amps. Doesn't really say what the max charge rate is. There seems to be a page for each model battery they sell. This is the 100 amp hour mini. It's the same specifications as on the specifications page. BMS protection is overcharge, over discharge, over current, overheating, short circuit. It doesn't say anything about low temperature protection for charging, so I assume it does not have that. And there's just some very basic information on series and parallel connecting your batteries. I ran a capacity test using my American Reliance electronic load at a 0.2 C rate or a 20 amp discharge. It actually tested out pretty good. It came in at 103.5 amp hours. So here's a quick look at the battery before I pull anything out. We had this piece of epoxy board on the top here, protect it from the lid. We've got one positive, two negative cables. We've got four aluminum case prismatic cells. They are padded in pretty well with foam on all sides there. Uh, this, this positive connection here is bent at a Somewhat unusual angle, but I mean there is there is epoxy board there on the side to protect the cells Guys this battery is actually built pretty well So they do have three wrappings of strapping tape to hold the cells together There does appear to be at least one layer of insulative paper between the cells The bus bars are aluminum. They are laser welded into place and they do have humps there that would allow for some sort of expansion or movement I can't make out what brand cells these are. Here's a quick shot of the QR code there. We can see the balance leads are crimped onto ring terminals and screwed down to the bus bars. That's great to see as well. They're routed neatly up the center of the battery. They are zip tied into place and there is a layer of insulative paper between the cells and the balance leads. Now this does partially obstruct the vent. Of course, preference would be not to obstruct it at all, but it's still, you know, ventable should it need to be. And look at this. It actually does have what appears to be a temperature sensor. It looks like a temperature sensor and it's glued into place on the cell. The only thing I don't really like is how this connection is bent here. We have an aluminum bus bar coming off the main negative there and that's going directly down to the BMS here. The BMS is strapped to the side of the battery, again with some epoxy board insulating it from the cells. Now it would be nice to see some sort of protection on these balance leads where they go under this bus bar, especially since this bus bar has sharp edges. So I don't know whether that be a piece of, you know, spiral wrap, plastic spiral wrap, or just something to insulate this from this bus bar. Should it come into contact with it? Before I take anything else apart, I do want to test the low temp charge protection on this just because I do see it as a temperature sensor here. So here we are charging the battery at approximately two amps. I'm going to spray the temperature sensor with some of this computer duster. It should take it well below freezing for a few seconds there. All right guys, so I hit the sensor uh, three times. I don't know, that was about 30 to 45 seconds there and it's still charging. So this does not have low temperature charge protection. Again, it's not advertised, but considering they have an actual temperature sensor there uh, instead of a thermal switch, I'm kind of surprised they didn't just program that functionality into the BMS since they already have a sensor, but there's no obvious brand name on the BMS, but I do see it says 100 amp and 100 amp over here as well. So as usual, I assume one of those is charge and one is discharge. 
As per usual, we have a very basic BMS here. This is part number LCD-D619-TOLL. This right here is a thermal switch for over temperature protection of the FETs, the MOSFETs here. This is where our balance leads came in. We have our bypass resistors here for balancing. We have the array of MOSFETs here, the transistors for controlling the charge and discharge. We have a few diodes here in the lower right. There's not too much else to see. It's a very basic BMS for a very basic budget battery. All right, guys, there we go. The Dong Hot 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate group 24 battery. And by the way, I do believe these are Goshen brand cells. I think they're 102 amp hour cells based on the Global Power QR code decoder. And here's a bit of information I found online. Based on what I'm seeing here, I do feel this is a very good deal for the $99 I paid for it. It's a budget battery and it does what it says it's supposed to do. Now, as of this video, the price is up to $140 after a one-time use coupon code. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.